Well, we have been talking over the last uh, couple of weeks about a subject that that I think pastors are finding difficult, and I have urged you to go over these things several times. And uh, I well, we have been talking over the last uh, couple of weeks about a subject that that I think pastors are finding difficult, and I have urged you to go over these things several times. And uh, I, well, we have been talking over the last uh, couple of weeks about a subject that that I think pastors are finding difficult, and I have urged you to go over these things several times. And uh, I, and, uh, I know you are being bombarded in this forum by new thoughts almost every week for the last uh, ten, 10 years. Oh, we also want to welcome Logi back from, uh, from India. Came last night. Put your hands together, Logi and Judy. Amen. <laughs> important that you realize that this forum is a doctrinal forum. Uh, it is not a fellowship forum. Okay, we are not a group therapy session. Okay, fellowship is very important. I believe in fellowship, but this is for men. This is for women. This is for people who are sons of God, sons of God. Uh, you come here to receive a word that you need to process over, over the days and over the weeks. This is not a charismatic forum. Amen. Neither is this a Pentecostal forum. And I want to say categorically the Pentecostal charismatic season is obsolete. Categorically the Pentecostal charismatic season is obsolete. And if you are still locked there, that within the next couple of years your ministry will self-destruct because you have not shifted to new positions. And uh, and this this new position, and uh, and this this new position uh, uh, comes with its own blessings at a different level. Dr. Ronnie and uh, Cindy were in Botswana with the ABC conference there, and uh, and conference there, and uh, and. I have some fantastic reports from Botswana. Um, they collected 1.5 million rands uh, for the conference there, ABC conference in 2016. Now that's that's the first African 2016. Now that's that's the first African country that presents such a big offering uh, for a conference that it has become totally autonomous. And in terms of finances, in terms of grace. In terms of anointing, this move of God will definitely be superior to any other move of God. That the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former house. Secondly, the demonstration of power in this season is different from the demonstration of power that you have known in the charismatic season. In the charismatic season, the demonstration of power was and that is not the critical definition of power in this apostolic season. I do not have time to go through this, but I go to charismatic meetings, and it is very offensive when pastors speaking in front give me the definition of power as healing and deliverance. Those pastors, if my Sunday, because they are so out of date, the demonstration, the greatest demonstration of power in the season is when you shift from a slave to a son. Okay, the hair as long as he is a child is no better than a slave. Now, I, I believe in healing and deliverance. I can present to you many. I can speak in tongues more than better than most of you. Uh, I can speak for hours in tongues, but that is not what our ministry is built on. Amen. The power demonstration is a transition from slavery to sonship, from revelation to implementation. From vocation to implementation. From vocalization to representation. From entertainment to equipping. From wandering to possessing. There are about 50 dimensions of power in this apostolic season. Furthermore, I want to warn you that if you are saying you are my son, and you 
Furthermore, I want to warn you that if you are saying you are my son, and you are a son of this apostolic season, and you go to these charismatic Pentecostal forums, and when you hear teachings that are erroneous, and you say amen, you will also self-destruct. Okay? And you will come to, okay? And you will come to me. Like some people come to me. They want to know why all this thing is happening to them. And I say to them, tell me what you did. And they don't tell me. And a few weeks later, I discover what they've been doing. They have been mixing it. You see, mix it is not a good thing. Okay? And, and this, this season, the apostolic reformation, this season now is a very persecuted move. Some people fled from their lives because of the persecution. You go somewhere, you must make your identity known. Amen? When I said Lucifer is Satan, uh, is not Satan, and I said Lucifer is a study that, okay? Uh, don't default, don't default to Oregon's ministry, which is now 1,800 years old and obsolete. Oregon was the one that said uh, Lucifer is Satan. The Roman Catholic Church adopted it. The era was continued and prepared in the 21st century. And in the apostolic, we are now destroying that, that, that era. And in destroying it, we have undermined Satan. So if you're getting upset, you are getting upset because Satan is being undermined. I need you to at least have been through school to get, get, you are not dealing with a foolish move. Okay, you are not dealing with a foolish move. This move challenges the deans of faculties. This move of God challenges professors of theological colleges. Amen? And it has shown their nakedness. So you in Phoenix are not qualified to find nakedness. So you in Phoenix are not qualified to fight God. You're not qualified to fight God. I have seen over 50 pastors die because they speak evil of that which they do not understand. So don't be a part of that. Amen. You need to know how to walk away from So don't be a part of that. Amen. You need to know how to walk away from certain people who are fighting God because no one has ever won by fighting God. Amen. You align yourself with what God is saying in this season. Jesus said you're either with me or you are against me. There is no in between of the move of God. It's a forward thrust of the final move of God. The finish is very hard. The finish requires extra breath. The finish requires extra musculature. The, fin the finish requires uh, good skeletal structure because we want to finish strong. Amen. We don't want to finish weak. Great is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. So, all of these things are very important in our understanding of what Abram had in his house. Abram, when he was attacked by, the four, by four kings, went and rescued Lot. Went and rescued 318 trained servants in his house. And I told you that word servant is an inserted word. That, that the, and I explained to you how the 318 are actually adopted sons trained in his own house, and I shared with you how the whole paradigm of building in the 20th in his own house, and I shared with you how the whole paradigm of building in the 21st century has changed in that uh, our sons must be trained in our own houses. And they're not trained in a Bible school far away. But we, at the same time we are saying that our sons must also, at the same time we are saying that our sons must also have secular degrees. Amen. Every son in the house, I encourage them to go and get a secular degree. Get the cheapest and the easiest secular degree. At least you got a degree, a valid degree from one of the secular degree. At least you got a degree, a valid degree from one of the secular institutions. But the biblical training you'll get in the house. Amen. The training of the word of the Lord you will get in the house. And the 318 were trained in his own house. And the Bible says of these 318, they were able to house. And the Bible says of these 318, they were able to defeat four kings and the armies and usher in the presence of Melchizedek. So this is an awesome son to have in the house. 
a son that can put his hand of the order of Eliezer. And Eliezer, the, the Hebrew gematria for Eliezer is a euphemistic term for putting your, his hand upon your scrotal sack, the sack of seeds, and to make a covenant that he will protect your seed. And this is a very caliber of the 318 son. And I pray in the name of Jesus, you will get those 318 sons who will will members in the church. So when I was talking to you about 318, at the same time I mentioned to you 153, and you need to go and study the 153 concept of the 153 mega fish, and that's a different kind of son. Those are sons of the kingdom. And I probably mentioned at some stage, then there's a 300 company, at some stage, then there's a 300 company, a 300 company, and 300 is in the Hebrew is written as a T, and it is a metaphorical designation of the cross. The T to an Hebrew was a designation of the cross. So the 300 company res- represent a cross company, a company, 300 company res- represent a cross company, a company of self-denial, a company that is able to break together, a company that is able to shine the light together, a company that is one loaf, a company that is able to defeat the Midianite is one loaf, a company that is able to defeat the Midianite, and Midianite means contention, strife, a company that is able to bring the nation to rest. Amen. That's a separate company. That alone would take another an hour or so uh, to teach on. Then, of course, that alone would take another an hour or so uh, to teach on. Then, of course, there's the 276 company. The 276, you recall, were the ones that were in the ship together with, with, with Paul, all of them making 276, on the way to Rome, and they met Euroclidon. And they met Euroclidon. You remember that? And the ship crashed, uh, and they all landed on the shore safely. And the reason they landed safely is because all of them were able to listen to Paul. Listen to Paul. Can you imagine a whole bunch of criminals listening listening on a ship to the apostle Paul delivering the Dabah? Talking to them about Euroclidon. Talking to them about the storm. And that does not call them 276 sons. The Bible calls them 276 souls. Uh, the word soul is a word suke. And is a reference to the flesh. It is a figure of speech used is synec daki. Synec daki is where you use the main thing. Like for instance, when I mention a pair of heels, I'm mentioning shoes. When I'm talking about sails, I'm talking about a ship. So when I talk about souls, I'm talking about the whole person. So it's a particular reference to flesh. And 276 souls, the Bible tells us, were saved. And the daba that came out from Paul's mouth. And the daba in Hebrew, in Greek, in Gematria, is 276. Okay? But 276 is a unique number. It's 6 times 46. And six is a number of flesh, 46 is a number of Adam. 40 is the number of flesh, 46 is a number of Adam. 46 is also the number of human chromosomes that every human being has. So all of you here have 46 chromosomes. If you have 45 and a half, you are an alien. Okay? So we are all, we all share that common bond. We are, okay? So we are all, we all share that common bond. We have 46 chromosomes. Whether you are African, Indian, whatever, you have 46 chromosomes. It is pointing, this number points to the flesh. So you have 276 people, they are sold, find the reference to the flesh. They are enjoying deliverance from Euroclidon. They are enjoying the benefits of a powerful deliverance ministry. Amen? But they were never connected to Paul. You can sit in a ministry as a soul. Operated with souls. Hmm? But we're not operating like that anymore. Amen? We are looking for sons. That's why this movement is, is different. 
because those souls got saved because they listened to the daba. But thereafter, another ship was being built. They got on the ship and they went back to prison. I'm Eurocliden, but not from prison. Amen. You need sons in the house. And we need 300 sons. We need 153 sons. We need the 318 sons. These are extremely unique sons. 300 sons represents brokenness. 318 sons represent sons to the will of the father. 153 sons also represent the brokenness element where they are disconnected from the, the ocean, disconnected from a system and coming into a new system. But a 276, the only thing that is broken there is a ship. They are not a broken people. And you could have a lot of people in your church, but they are 276 people. They are fleshly people governed by the flesh. They are there just to enjoy your grace. But they never connect with you. And that's not how we're building church. Okay, that's why we're not looking for the numbers. You go to India, you'll get one million people. Okay, that's why we're not looking for the numbers. You go to India, you'll get one million people coming to your meeting. They'll come there for deliverance from Eurocliden. Amen? But they will not connect to you. And that's not what we are building. That's why when you go to India, when I go to India, I say to the pastors, I say to the people, I don't, when I go to India, I say to the pastors, I say to the people, I don't want to speak to any member of your church. I only want to speak to pastors. If you change the pastors, then you'll change India. And of course, that's an even bigger storm than Eurocliden. Amen? So when we talk about the represents adoption, I dealt with that extensively last week. And I showed you the characteristics of adoption Adoption is another word for maturity. It's another word for growing up. And uh, it's euthesia, the spirit of adoption. And it has several characteristics. Overcomer, having the nature, the nature of the pattern son Christ. Having spirit sensitivity. Knowing your heritage. Intimacy with God. Coming to perfection. I just need to mention that Overcoming, that overcoming is going to be one of the main demonstrations of your maturity. Because you are not going, you are going to have the same problems like everyone else. The only difference between you and them is you will overcome. That is between you and them is you will overcome. That means when you come to Jesus, there's no guarantee that you will not get cancer. Amen? But you will overcome that cancer. I have people, I have a person in my church, in our church, who has a stage 4 breast cancer, in our church, who has a stage 4 breast cancer, and overcame it in the name of Jesus. Another person in our church with brain tumor, overcame it in the name of Jesus. Pastor Bubbles is here, colon cancer, overcame it in the name of Jesus. Amen? That means they passed the five-year survival, came it in the name of Jesus. Amen? That means they passed the five-year survival rate. You cannot say a person is healed and he dies next week. Okay? You passed the five-year survival rate. So, overcoming is very important. We're going to be faced with a barrage of problems. You're going to hear of many Christians committing suicide, committing suicide, because they've never heard this message. Amen? The, the, one of the lead drummers in the charismatic movement in the Toronto, when the Toronto move started, he was the lead drummer of the airport church, which, which at that stage had gone through thousands of people who had come and went and committed suicide. After the meeting in Chatsworth, uh, in Tongat, in Tongat, one of the doctors went and committed suicide. Okay? David Askins was the leader of 4.2 million charismatics, committed suicide. And 15 years ago, I prophesied that the charismatic movement is Samson. And Samson ended by committing suicide. When I sent that article to Personality Magazine, they rejected it. But you can't reject truth. The truth will still stand. Amen? So when we're talking about the 318 sons and adoption and the importance of coming uh, to maturity, 
That's what a 318 son is, a mature son. He has come to adoption. He has moved beyond slavery to sonship. And another important characteristic of the 318 son, he has an amazing sense to see. So when you read scripture, he's able to see it. Even if he's not very educated, he can see it because the veil over his heart has been torn. The reason why many people cannot see the word of God as we are delivering it is because there's a veil over the hearts. The word of God as we are delivering it is because there's a veil over the hearts. So when the veil is over your heart, when I tell you things like heaven does not have streets of gold, you will not get upset. Amen? And you'll go back and examine the word, you'll find heaven has only one street of gold. And that once you'll go back and examine the word, you'll find heaven has only one street of gold. And that one street of gold is Christ. Amen. When I tell you there's no rapture, you won't get upset. Amen. Because rapture was an American fabrication. Yeah. Tim LaHaye sold 65 million books out of a lie. And, 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 and if you go into a meeting where they are talking about rapture and so on, and you sit down quietly, their blood will be required of you. Amen. The movie is about to be released, I think, this month, left behind the upgraded series because the previous one made so much of money, so they want to print another one. And that movie is going to be released. Everyone's going to have an escapist mentality after watching this movie. And a lot of people like that kind of movie because they want to see the unbelievers punished. They want to see the Muslim getting clobbered by God. Because many Christians have a revenge mentality. That you should have a burden for the lost. That you should say, Lord, leave them, take me. That's the mentality of a son of God. So, so, perception means perceiving the word of God. When I share about the blood of Jesus, you cannot apply the blood of Jesus on thinking that I am against the blood of Jesus. We are telling you, we are telling you a divine truth that the blood of Jesus is precious. You can't put the blood of Jesus on a seat and then sit on the seat. Amen? So, so there's a whole host of things that we have been addressing over the last 15 years. And many pastors are afraid of talking about these things uh, openly or coming and discoursing on these things because they are unable to reason as sons. And that does not mean we stop because people are upset with this. Because oh, the people that, that cause people are upset with this. Because oh, the people that, that Jesus had a lot of problems with were the Pharisees. And the only person you are not allowed to have as your friend is a Pharisee. Because Jesus, Jesus despised them. Jesus ridiculed them. Jesus mocked them. Despised them. Jesus ridiculed them. Jesus mocked them. And there are many pastors that are Pharisees and scribes. And you should not be afraid of them. Amen? But the way to deal with a Pharisee is you never deal with a Pharisee in a crowd. You call him out for a fair fight. Deal with a Pharisee in a crowd. You call him out for a fair fight. Amen? One on one. Take him somewhere quietly where the crowd is not behind him. You see how he'll behave himself. Amen. amen? Once he's got the crowd behind him, amen. amen? Once he's got the crowd behind him, amen. you know, he gets, the Pharisee gets very excited amen. because he knows he got Barabbas on his side. Amen. So the mob mentality should not prevail in the church. Amen. If there are sincere inquirers, they will be like Nicodemus, one-on-one on one at night. Amen? amen? So don't be afraid of the Pharisee. Engage the Pharisee and, uh, and, uh, and talk to them about the things that you have been studying. Now, when we talk about adoption, thus far, we have been talking about adoption in the singular context. Not totally accurate. We're talking about adoption as Pastor Christopher coming to adoption. That means coming to the place of maturity. Adoption in the Bible, in the New Testament, is never taught in the singular. It's always taught in the plural. So that is primarily addressed to the corporate body. You can apply it to you singularly.
but the primary application is to the body. This Bible is addressed to the body. Amen. Amen. Even the Lord's prayer is the chart in heaven. In most cases, the address of scripture is to the body, to the corporate, not to an individual. Only the Philemon, Timothy, and Titus are addressed to individuals. The rest is to the body. And the, our follow, the follow will identify that throughout scripture, the reading should be in the, in the context of the corporate. The Bible says, he chose us in him, not chose me. The Bible says, our citizenship is in heaven, not my citizenship. The Bible says, our citizenship is in heaven, not my citizenship. The Bible says, in Philippians 3, verse 3, we are the circumcision, not I am the circumcision. The Bible says, even our obedience should be corporate. It says in one in Second John 6, should be corporate. It says in one in Second John 6, this is love that we walk according to his commandments. Even revival is corporate. Solomon prayed in Psalms 18, revive us. He didn't even pray, revive me. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. That means it's a corporate presentation as one living sacrifice. All of us presenting our bodies together as one sacrifice. Even our worship is corporate. Psalms 95.7. Let us worship. Even our rulership is corporate. And he has made us kings and priests. Even our anointing is corporate. 1 Corinthians 2.12 We have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of the world, but the spirit we is from God. We, not me, we. Even the grace is corporate. And of his fullness we have all received. Grace upon grace. Even the glory is corporate. Even our transformation is corporate. Even our transformation is corporate. 2 Corinthians 3.18 3, We all with unveiled, unveiled faces beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. So it's we all. That means all of us come together to view the mirror. All of us come together to view the unfolding scriptures. It's not one individual. Amen? And that's when the transformation takes place. When we all see the same thing in the mirror. Even exact representation is corporate. As he is, so are we in this mission. Is corporate. 2 Timothy 1.9 Who has saved us. Redemption, sanctification, perfection, glorification, sonship. All of that is corporate. So the manifestation, manifestation of adoption or our placement as sons. The corporate event is a corporate glorification of the body at his coming. Therefore, there's not going to be anyone on the earth that's going to get immortality before others. Amen? There are some people that think when they announced it, they are dead. Okay? This is a corporate event. When he appears, when he comes, the Bible says the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. Trumpet of God shall sound. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the, the Lord in the air. So we all together. Amen. It's not one preceding the other. The Bible tells you they will, we will not precede them. But we'll all be together. So this is a family business. Amen. The, the biggest challenge is the configuration of the corporate company. The, the biggest challenge is the configuration of the corporate company in the 21st century. The biggest challenge to those who are waiting on God for the revelation and waiting on God for fresh illumination is how this body is going to be unveiled on the earth. Is how this body is going to be unveiled on the earth. With 33,000 denominations. How is it going to happen? 
And that's why the next teaching over the next couple of years or so would be on the understanding of tribes. Just as in the Old Testament. And you can't be sitting at the table of every tribe. You have to sit under your banner. You have to identify yourself carefully according to the mantle that has been prepared to you. Therefore, I do not get upset with people that leave us. When I was young and was childish, I used to get upset when people leave me. Not a part of our tribe. Not a part of our tribe. That means they belong somewhere else. Amen? Some people are not meant to be with you. They may just come and help you for a while, and you shouldn't get upset when they leave you. I have to tell some, some pastors, I am not upset with you. I want to help you to find your tribe for us to understand where we belong and be secure in that. That we do not own anyone. Amen? But we must help others find the tribe. And as the tribes are formed, the tribes come together in the formation of the body of Christ. If you look at Romans chapter 8, which is a, the, the a thing in Romans chapter 8, is plural. It, there is nothing singular about Romans chapter 8. It says in verse 17, And if children, then heirs of God, and heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, then we may also be glorified together. Notice the plural. We suffer with him, not I plural. We suffer with him, not I suffer with him. We. And we may also be glorified together. How do we suffer together? Hmm? We get the same persecution. If you are not suffering for this message, not suffering for this message, you go to some other forum and they tell you, hey, what is all this nonsense I'm hearing about, about Dr. Sergi? He's talking about the application of the, the blood. I say, yeah, yeah, that, that brew is a false brew. I'm just going. I'm just going there, you know, just to check things out. Hmm? You know what I'm saying? Huh? No, no, you must suffer with us. Amen. Uh, can I get your word on that? You must suffer with us. Take the blows. Huh? You must suffer with us. Take the blows. Huh? You must tell them. I'm sorry to tell you, I'm part of that company. Don't even say sorry. I rejoice to tell you. I rejoice to tell you that I'm part of that company. Paul says, For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the, the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Not in me, in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Plural again. But because of him was subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Look at verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also, first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting eagerly for the adoption, the redemption of our body, not my body, our body. Everything in Romans chapter 8 is plural. It's we, it's us, it's our. To come upon us that, that you are not alone. That you cannot measure yourself by your church size. You belong to this us. You belong to this we. But we have been paralyzed into pastor, local church. But what I'm saying to you is to understand that there is something bigger than your local church. It's called us. It's called we. It's called the body of Christ. And redemption of the body is promised to that company. Promised to that company. Immortality, which is equal to redemption of the body, is promised to that company company. Beloved, in 1 John 3, 2, it says, Beloved, now we are the children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is re revealed, what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, 
for ye shall see, for we shall see him as he is. So the promise of immortality and glorification is in the future, which is the ultimate benefit of adoption. That is the full manifestation of your sonship. So when you use scriptures like, by his stripes, we are healed. You have to go and study the context. The context in the Hebrew is not physical to be healed from sin. Amen. Amen. And the ultimate manifestation of your healing from sin is the manifestation of an incorruptible body in the fullness of his time. Glorification is future and get sick again. You'll never have asthma, you'll never have diabetes, you'll never have hypertension, you'll never have any of the diseases of the Egyptians. Amen? That is why everyone that was healed in the last 2,000 years still died. Amen? Healing is a relative concept. Amen? Healing is a relative concept. Amen? So please understand that the final manifestation of the healing is future and it is in the redeemed body, the incorruptible body. That is why you got many good Christians today who are still sick in the body. That is why you got many good Christians today who are still sick in the body. Hmm? Smith Wigglesworth, the great faith healer, suffered from renal calcula for many years. He would have bottles and bottles of the renal calculi stored as a testimony of his suffering. And many other testimony of his suffering. And many other people that, that I know of uh, who, who were sick in the body. But we all live with this hope. The hope of the resurrection. Amen. Amen? But you won't be wearing glasses. Amen. Notice even the building in the mirror is corporate. We all with unveiled faces. It is not the son crying, Abba, Father, but the sons. Romans 8, 6. Because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts. Ah, Father. Even the Ephesian context is plural. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Not bless me. With all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. According as he has chosen us in him should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So the entire context is plural. Our biggest to plurality. That is our biggest challenge as pastors. America has been destroyed by singularity. Europe has been destroyed by singularity. Therefore, you got two churches next to each other. They don't talk to each other. Because they got different fathers. The person down the ch road, another church, is your brother. And you have to understand that. Otherwise, you will be building the Corinthian era. I am of Paul. I am of Peter. I am of Apollos. Amen? And I think your identity and that you know where you belong to a certain tribe, we should not be telling our people to boycott meetings. Amen. You go to the meetings. If you've got time, that is. You go to other people's meetings. Show them that you're part of them. If they acknowledge Christ, you're part of them. Show them that you're part of them. If they acknowledge Christ, you're part of them. I go to charismatic services. I go to Pentecostal services. I go to the Anglican church. Uh, sometimes the greatest encounters I've had is in the Anglican church. Presbyterian church. But I know my identity. But I know my identity. I won't sit there forever. Amen. I know where I belong. I know the assignment that God has given to us. Amen. And because Paul had this. Paul says, my, I have continual sorrow in my heart for my brothers who have not come for my brothers who have not come to this revelation where the veil is still over the hearts 
And therefore we pray. We pray for those who despise us. We bless those who curse us. Amen. Because we want the veil to be broken. We want them to see. I, we want the veil to be broken. We want them to see. I've had this experience many times where pastors have fought with me for 10 years. And one day the veil was broken. And they would come running to me and, and plead for forgiveness. And, and embrace me. And the change was so Only God can remove the veil. But your responsibility is to pray. I don't know why God does this. He'll give you the revelation. The other person sitting next to you. Nothing. And then you will have all the trouble explaining to the fellow next to you. And then the great challenge is you will not realizing that you received the grace. And he didn't receive the grace. And you have to know now how to be a transmitter of grace. Amen. It's not going to help you if you're going to start fighting with people, get angry with them. And you don't know how to present. I urge you to learn how to present this. I was just sharing with some pastors today. I was just sharing with some pastors today uh, that maybe I may be very violent on the pulpit, but when I'm engaging with pastors, I am not pugilistic and belligerent. You don't poke people in the chest like that and talk to them. You get what I'm talking about? Amen? You get what I'm talking about? Amen? Amen. I pray that God would give us more grace in this area. Amen. Amen. Even if you have the ministry of correction, you've got to know how to correct in love. Amen. Amen. But in the corporate, yes, we can do it. In the corporate, we can do it. We can speak violent things. Amen. Like the way Paul did when he stood up and publicly chastised Peter. Why? He knew he was chastising someone that was a wise man. He was chastising someone that was on the same frequency. Uh, he could chastise him openly and the whole body would learn. Amen? Amen. And stand up publicly once amongst 300 pastors and chastise the chairman. Amen. Had to chastise him because he was saying that our networks and forums must be built on rotational chairmanship. And I said to him, I stood up and I went up in the front and I said, I, I, give me a minute to, to just say something. He was a bit scared because he knew my reputation. But he allowed me to speak. He allowed me to speak. And I said to him, I beg to defer with what the man said. I said, yes, you can rotate a chairman every two years. But you can't rotate a father every two years. I'm not building chairmanship. I'm not the chairman of this gathering. But if you come and address me as chairman, I won't, I won't be offended. <laughs> Amen? But I know my identity. I'm not the chairman of this. Okay? So it's very important that we know building patterns, accurate building patterns, yeah. biblical patterns. And if you ask me that, where does, does it come from the universities of this world? No. This authority comes from above. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And I, and I want to see brave people. If Malema can stand up in parliament, yeah. what are you scared about? Yeah. When your authority is from heaven. Yeah. Amen? We, we need to get authority is from heaven. Yeah. Amen? We, we need to get our churches delivered from cowardice. Now people need to talk up and need to rise up and speak. And the 318 company, 318 company, the corporate son, must arise. Incidentally, 318 son must arise. Incidentally, 318, 318 in Hebrew, gematria is equal to to unite. 318 in Hebrew, gematria, is equal to dwell. The word dwell means to be married. To dwell. The word dwell means to be married. And that's, that's the context of Psalms 133. Build our good and our pleasant it is for brethren to 318 together. In unity. Amen? In unity. Amen? Some people have written the whole Bible in Gematria. So if you go read it in Gematria, you'll see that. 318. To dwell together in unity. It says, it is like precious ointment upon the earth that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment, as a dew of ermine, and as a dew that descends upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commands a blessing, even life forevermore. 
God commands life to the 318. And this is the very life of Christ. And is familiar with Elios. Okay, Elios oil. If there's an Elios oil sale in checkers, there will be a stampede. I know a lady that got trampled to death in the plaza because she went to buy Elios oil. Elios in the Greek is 318. So you can't forget that. And I want to prove to you that the 318 refers to the corporate company. In Revelation 1.10, it says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet, girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as his feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a two-edged sword. And his countenance was like the Elios. Shining in its strength. This is the only place I think in the Bible. Where you see Jesus and the church together. That means when you look at Jesus. When John turned to see Jesus, he saw the seven candlesticks and he saw Jesus. You couldn't see Jesus alone. When you look at the candlestick, you saw Christ. When you looked at the Christ, you saw the candlestick. You can't, you can't divide the head and the body. And this is the finest picture of the corporate Christ. And the description you see is a description of the corporate Christ. That's why it's called the sound of many waters. Because you go to a different tribe, you'll hear another sound. That does not mean they're wrong. Amen? And tribal configurations are going to rise. I believe there are certain denominations that will become tribes on their own. These are accurate denominations that love Jesus with all the heart. They are not, ma they are not mafias. There are some denominations that are mafias. There are certain countries... The denominations have colluded with the government. They've paid a certain fee to the government. And they will not allow you to enter that nation. And they control the city. They control the politics of the city. I'm talking. And they control the city. They control the politics of the city. I'm talking about. I'm not talking about Roman Catholic denominations. I'm talking about Pentecostal charismatic denominations. Who have used all the money that God has given to them. To buy power in government. So that they can lock out the others. That's a diatrepous spirit. Yeah. If you go to the Fiji, they can lock out the others. That's a diatrepous spirit. Yeah. If you go to the Fiji Islands, you'll find that that, that, is, that that is how ministry operates. And it is very, very frightening. But we see Jesus. We see the seven golden candlesticks. And we see that his countenance. Candlesticks, and we see that his countenance. Is 318. And what is countenance? Countenance is your identity. Amen? And that's the identity of the corporate Christ. It is the countenance. Then you look at another picture. Revelation 10, 1, 1 to 7. I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was on his head, and is face was like the Elios and his feet like pillars of fire. Again you're seeing another because use the same word for messenger and use the same word for an incorporeal spirit being. So this, this is a messenger and this whole book is a symbolic book and who is the, the mighty messenger? It's Jesus. You have a picture of Jesus. Not an incorporeal being. He picked left foot on the land and he cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars. Who's the lion? Jesus. 
When he cried out, seven thunders uttered the voices. And when the seven thunders uttered the voices, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered and do not write them saying to me seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered and do not write them so don't try to interpret the seven thunders amen some people have written book on the seven thunders the angel Jesus was telling John this voice of seven thunders is not this voice of seven thunders is not for public consumption it was for John only amen so you got, you got to be careful now. You don't go and start doing some interpretation there. It's not meant for you. The angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up. The angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up his hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are in it, the earth and the things that are in it, and the sea and the things that are in it. And there should be delay no longer. But in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, when it had sounded, the mystery of God would be finished. As at the sounding of the seventh angel, when it had sounded, the mystery of God would be finished as he declared to his servants the prophets. And this is a very powerful picture of Christ again. And if you go and look at it again, you'll see that this picture is a picture of the fourfold nature of God. When it says, it says, uh, clothed with the cloud. Cloud in the Bible is a symbol of the spirit. It's also a symbol of judgment, a rainbow, a symbol of love, sun, symbol of light, pillars of fire. All of spirit, God is love, God is light, God is fire. These are the four natures of God. Roars like a lion. This is Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah. He got his right foot on the sea, left foot on the land. Land refers 12 times. In the book of Revelation, to the nation of Israel, to the Gentiles. So he's got one foot on the Gentiles, one foot on the Jew. What is that about? That is about breaking the middle wall of partition between Jew and Gentile and reconciling them. Then the angel I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up his hand to heaven. That means pointed to the earth. That means Jesus reconciling heaven and earth. Amen. And then the, the triple witness, the voice of the mighty angel was Jesus, the voice of the seven thunders, the Holy Spirit, the voice from heaven, which is the Father, and that there should be delights, will no longer be a separate people. Unfortunately, that revelation has not come to the Jews yet. In Christ, there is neither Jew nor Gentile. And the Jew is saved the same way that you got saved. He must come to Jesus. And he must not think of a future salvation. The Bible says today, and you must not think of a future salvation. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. The message of reconciliation must go to the nations. You must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. Now remember what the Bible says. As he is tongues and kings. Now remember what the Bible says. As he is, so are we. So everything you saw about the mighty angel... Must be seen in a people. Amen. So the cloud means that there is a corporate presence of the law. Now let me just. I'm going to be talking from time to time about this left behind thing. I have to dismantle it before that movie comes. <laughs> Amen. We have to keep talking about this. Okay. Uh, like you know I've been criticizing the movie. No I decided to watch it. That's inaccurate. You know, you got one guy actually breaking into the ark. <laughs> and he nearly saved himself. And you got six people going into the ark. The Bible tells us eight people. Went. So it's full of inaccuracies. Yeah. Now, similarly, when you say great tribulation, great tribulation, when you say great tribulation, uh, the great tribulation, as we know in the Bible, is over. But you see, when the Americans read it, okay, they don't know about the sufferings of Africa. Yeah, yeah. To them, sufferings of Africa. Yeah, yeah. To them, great tribulation is, oh, we're going to die. 
one person got t- tuberculosis in the casualty ward of uh, a major New York hospital, it sends the whole of America into panic. In South Africa, I think there's some TB patients here right now. <laughs> Because the American concept of great tribulation is sickness, disease, death. European context, uh, great tribulation, sickness, disease, death. And great tribulation is three and a half has been having disease, death, demonization, uh, troubles beyond any imagination for I don't know how many thousands of years. That means Africa has been under great tribulation. For years and years and years. Because something like, like, something like Lesotho happened. A lot of people will kill themselves. That's the concept of great tribulation. But for a Jew, great tribulation and a Muslim, great tribulation was not death. For a Jew, great tribulation was a loss of his temple. Is the loss of Mecca. Can you imagine if there's an earthquake... And the Kaaba gets swallowed. <laughs> Can you imagine what's going to happen? For the Muslim, it's going to be great tribulation. But for a Christian, a great tribulation. That's what great tribulation is for us. That's why David said, Do not take away your Holy Spirit from me. Hey, you got to get your doctrine right. Right. You cannot live this life without the cloud. Without the presence of God. You cannot minister apostolic truth without the presence of God. You cannot go back to your home without the presence of God. The presence of God. You will be perpetually depressed. And empty and sad. So this corporate company has a crowd. This corporate company has a rainbow. That means it's a multicolored community. Colored community. And rainbow is formed by light passing through bubbles of water at a critical angle of 42 degrees. That's the 42nd generation. And this company has a fire. That means it's baptized in fire. fire. That means it's baptized in fire. It's been through the process of purification. And the Bible says its face was like the sun. Identity 318. To this company has been given the ministry of reconciliation, bringing nations together. Therefore, all of you are traveling, going through bringing nations together. Therefore, all of you are traveling, going through strange places. Risking your life at very low income churches. You have a burden to go to the nations. To you has been given the ministry of reconciling and continuing with the ministry of reconciliation. Of bringing heaven to earth. Reconciling and continuing with the ministry of reconciliation. Of bringing heaven to earth. The heavenization of the earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Of reconciling all peoples. So... You can fulfill the prayer of Jesus. Your will be done on earth as it is. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So you'll find the first company that you saw, countenance as the face, countenance as the sun, 318 company. Second, com- second angel we see, countenance, face like the sun. Face, countenance. You see, the third witness seals this thing. It's Revelation 12. And now a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with a sun, with a moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And how many of you know your clothing is your identity? And she's clothed with the Elios. And Elios is 318. So we get a picture here of a woman being the church. Feet over the moon. That means this church has come to dominion. It's ruling over darkness. Complaining about the darkness. Stop complaining about the corruption in this country. 
Stop complaining about in Kandla. Hello? No, stop it. You'll, you'll get depressed. Stop complaining. It's not, it's not even going to work out because corruption can't solve corruption. Human beings can't solve their problems. If you think this government is corrupt, you don't know about the other governments. You don't know about the American system of government. Government. Yeah, they, they will steal maybe, what, one billion? America will steal trillions and you won't even know it. They print their own money. You don't know that? Hmm? Then when Robert Mugabe learned that they were printing their money, he started printing. Robert Mugabe learned that they were printing their money, he started printing their money. <laughs> and they caught him. They said, hey, you can't print like us. <laughs> Listen, all human beings are corrupt. Don't get defied when you see corruption. Amen? Because given the situational circumstances, you will do the same thing. One person said to me, he'll never commit adultery. <laughs> No, you will not have the same opportunities. <laughs> Most cases of them is based on jealousy. Most cases of church discipline based on jealousy. How you did it and got away with it. You must be punished. <laughs> Amen? No, no, corruption is a fabric of human intent. The corruption is a fabric of human intent. It's the flesh. You've got the fleshly nature. I've got the fleshly nature. I can do some corrupt things. But therefore I need protection. And the protection I have is us. And the protection I have is us. When I started this forum many years ago, I was the only preacher here. Yeah? For five years, I was the only preacher. No one else preached. Now, we've got all the elders preaching. We've got all the elders traveling. All of them got their own forums. You've got all the elders traveling. All of them got their own forums. You've got your own forum. So now we've got, we've got accountability. Now we've got bishops here. <laughs> you should have figured out by now that the presbytery are bishops. I don't have to give them a title. They are bishops. So when I address them as bishops, you shouldn't be getting... I don't have to give them a title. They are bishops. So when I address them as bishops, you shouldn't be getting upset. Because they are the episcopals. They are giving oversight. And then you are also a bishop over your church. Amen? Yeah. That's the only problem. You don't have the garment. This morning you heard about it. Romel took away the garment. But the woman is clothed with the sun. Moon under her feet. You must rule over the darkness. And the way to rule over the darkness is sometimes you just ignore it. And shine your light. Darkness flees when they must not smoke. I never, I've never told you. That's not, not my ministry. But wherever I go, if people are drinking and smoking, they quickly hide the cigarette. Like my brother was a Hindu. As soon as he sees me, he hides his beer. He lights it in the back. <laughs> I didn't tell him he must hide it. I didn't tell him he must hide it. I never even, I never even condemned his drinking. Why? I saw the light. I saw the light. Hmm? I go to a doctor's meeting. Suddenly everyone stops swearing. Before I go there, they're always swearing. Everyone stops swearing. Before I go there, they're always swearing. I don't know whether you know, but doctors can really swear. Take out all the frustration of the medical aids, everything in the personal conflict. When I walk there, all of them stop swearing. Why? Why? You put some light there in government? Hey, no, no, I can't steal this money, yeah? Because this light, 
They'll say, because there's light tea. <laughs> this light tea will expose you. Amen. So we need some light tea. And get, get your identity right. Get your identity right. You are clothed with the helios. And the moon under the feet. And you have a garland on a head of 12 stars. It's all about dominion. Dominion has been darkness shall cover the earth. Deep darkness of people. But the light shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you. Gentiles shall come to your light. Kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around you and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Promise to you. And it says of this, this woman, she gives birth. She's travailing. Only the mature can travail. Only the mature can travail. Amen. And when the mature travail, they produce. I know of people go to the meetings, they're just travailing, 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 pushing, 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 screaming, pushing, pushing, falling down, rolling, pushing, pushing. Producing nothing. Then I find out why. No, they've got problems at home. Husband don't talk to them. Children don't talk to them. They got no friends. Don't talk to them. Children don't talk to them. They got no friends. So they'll come into the gathering and cry there because you can get other people to listen to you. It's a powerful therapy session. Amen. It's a group therapy session. All of you come and push, push. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Hmm? It's a powerful therapy session. Hmm? It's a powerful therapy session. It's called it's called group it's called group therapy psychiatrists use this all the time you push i push we do it together you travel i travel after the meeting you feel so nice power of god no no you release some endorphins travel i travel after the meeting you feel so nice power of god no no you release some endorphins and encephalins from your brain that made you feel nice it was not the presence of god zion when it travails it brings forth you must produce something. Show me your sons. Where's your sons? Show me. You must produce something. Show me your sons. Where's your sons? Show me your sons. Otherwise, you've been travailing and you have been bringing forth wind. This church, when it travails, brings forth a mature son that will rule the nations with the rod of iron. And the rod of iron is the word of God. Rule with the word of God. That's how we rule. We rule with the word of God. If you don't know the word of God, you don't have the rod of iron. That's the dominion that has been given to us. We rule through the word. The word is in us. It is incarnated in us. Of power. Is, it's called the dunamis. Dunamis is not just unnatural signs wonders. Which, which is there. Which is there. And we need that. But there's a, it actually, another meaning of it is inherent intrinsic power. That means when the, that power comes upon you, it becomes an essential part of you. So it becomes so much a part of you that things begin to happen in your environment because of you. But you know it is because of him in you. Amen. Because the way God did it is he did it through inerrancy. He did it through intrinsicality. He did it by becoming a part of you. So God wanted to hide himself in you. So when Peter was walking and they touched his shadow and they got healed, they all thought it was Peter. You do it in such a way, everyone thinks it's you. But you got to say, hey, no, no, it's not me. It's him. He's waiting for you to say, it's not me, it's him. Yeah. That's what Jesus did. He says, not me, it's my father. Yeah. The things that I do is because of my father. That's all that I do is because of my father. That's how dominion operates in the kingdom of God. The 318 son must give birth to the uyos that can rule. Chaucer. The configuration of this company, Chaucer, the configuration of this company is still in the future. But it is manifesting on the earth. 
and how it's going to manifest. We don't have the full story, but we know that there will be a first fruit company. This is your Eve offering. It shall be reckoned unto you as though it were the corn of the threshing floor and as the fullness of the winepress. What God was saying, when you heave the offering to me, in the context was when all the Levites brought the tithe, you took the tithe of all the tithes and you gave it to the high priest. And that was offering. God said, you gave me all the offerings that were on the threshing floor. That means that one small bit represented everything. There is a bit that will represent everything. And that's the 318. That's the 318. That is Eliezer who represented the 318 servants in the whole house. Corporate company. Amen. And that's a big story. That's a temple of God. That's a corporate church. You have to go and refer to my previous messages on the city church. And that corporate to my previous messages on the city church. And that corporate company as it arises and comes to the same journey of Jesus comes to Jordan. Jordan means humility, descending. When that company comes to Jordan, the heavens open. And you're going to see the 11 things there that took place when the heavens opened for Jesus. Extraordinary things. Amen. We are an extraordinary church. Amen. Amen. You are an extraordinary company. A company that has been adopted. Let us grow up into the pray together today. As we worship together. Come and lift up your hands. Bless the name of Jesus. Father in the name of Jesus. We pray Lord our countenance shall be like the sun. We pray Lord our our clothing shall be like the sun. Our face like the sun. Lord, we pray for the three demonstrated in this company, Lord. Lord, a people that will show forth the glory of God. A people, Lord, that will reproduce vision. A people, Lord, that will have their hand on the sack. And Lord, will not deny covenant. A people, Lord, that will know how to obey covenant. A people that will be faithful to God that will speak of the glory of God and the mysteries of God and the decrees of God. We thank you, Lord. Our face shall shine like the sun. Our feet shall be over the moon. And Lord, the 12 stars on our head, that we will be a people of rulership and dominion, demonstrating that a strong company that will rise and shine in the midst of a darkness, that this will not be a people that will complain. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your people arise and issue forth the decrees, the decrees of the Lord. Let your people begin to speak the utterances of God. Let your people begin to speak one another as they will begin to speak the utterances of God. Let your people begin to speak one another as they fear the Lord. And let your word run swiftly through the city, O oh God. We thank you, God. Your enemies will be scattered. We thank you, Father. No one will be able to stand against this word. We thank you, Father. No one will be able to position themselves against this, stand against this word. We thank you, Father. No one will be able to position themselves against this word. Your word is an hammer. We thank you, Lord. It will smash unrighteousness. We thank you that the unrighteous are like the shaft that the wind will drive away. But your people will stand the test of time. Your people will be overcomers, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you no weapon formed against the company shall prosper. No tongue raised against us shall stand. I pray, Lord, you'll soften and, and you will silence every satanic tongue. In the name of Jesus, we pray those of the synagogue of sin and worship before us and declare the true and the living God in our midst. I thank you that this company will prosper.